Hello everybody, how are you guys doing? Hope everything is fine, wherever you are. This is Spanish Grandmaster Pepe Cuenca, and I welcome you to the Gerba Women Open Online. Yesterday, hundreds of uh, women chess players, uh, they fought uh, only chess in a Swiss tournament, and a tournament with $2,000 uh, in euros, sorry, in prices, and the first uh, four places today are gonna fight for the trophy. And also the winner will be invited to the Gerba Chess Festival, which will take place in Gerba, the beautiful island of Tunisia, in February 2022. So uh, I see uh, already a lot of people in the chat out there on the Twitch, on YouTube, on Facebook. I'm reading you guys, so you can, uh, well, you can ask uh, whatever you need. You can uh, comment. I'm here reading you guys. And uh, we'll have two semifinals. In the first one, two strong Russian players, Baira Kovanova, uh, woman grandmaster, will face Anastasia Botnaruk, international master. And in the second semifinal, we'll have Alina Bibo from Russia versus uh, Candela Francisco. Candela, she's a very uh, promising player from Argentina. She is only 15 years old, uh, if I'm not wrong. So she's improving a lot. So for sure, this will be extremely interesting. So the first uh, semifinal starts with e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6. And sorry, guys. And now we go for the Spanish Ruy Lopez, as you can see here, bishop b7. Of course, uh, now white can play rook e1, protecting the e4 pawn and bishop to c5, c3. White wants to, uh, well, install a beautiful pawn center, uh, as you can see, and now a4. Trying to, you know, put some pressure against the b5 pawn, right? So sometimes, you know, an idea is to trade everything on b5, on a8, and then knight a3, putting some pressure against the b5 pawn. But Anastasia decided to go for bishop g5, pinning this knight on f6. It looks like uh, they're extremely well prepared. As you guys uh, can see, they're blitzing out all those moves. And uh, well, she takes d4, and now white has this nice square for the knight. One idea could be to go knight c3 and knight d5, you know, putting extremely 
uh, heavy pressure against the f6 knight. So this is why black plays g5 now, bishop to g3. Very interesting, as usual, is to capture in g5, but I think this was not a good idea because after all trades, the d4 pawn was completely hanging. So this is why Anastasia went for uh, bishop to g3. And now rook e8 looks to me like a very natural move, putting pressure against the e4 pawn, right? And knight c3, you know, it's not so easy to play because of b4 ideas and then e4 is actually hanging. Sorry, guys, let me uh, just put the clocks. Sorry, guys, this is my fault, completely my fault. And, uh, you know, they're playing uh, blitz control. So this means three minutes uh, plus two seconds increment on each move. So thanks for the comment over there on the YouTube chat, uh, Hatmat Burham. Uh, sorry for my pronunciation. And now G4. The thing is, if you move this knight away to H4, then the D4 pawn is just hanging. Right? So uh, maybe you can play the intermediate move D5, counterattacking and also putting pressure against the knight on C6. This looks to me as the best move right now in this position because you go knight H4, then knight takes D4, even bishop takes D4 looks very, very interesting for black. So uh, critical position, Anastasia is thinking. Remember that these matches are played to the best of six games. That means the one uh, reaching three and a half points will win the match. In case of a tie, in case of 3-3, three, three, we'll go for two more blitz games. In case of a tie, we'll go for Armageddon, right? This is not only a Bruce Willis uh, movie, right? But it's also a way to, <laughs> to break the tie in chess, right? Okay, so D5 is played by Anastasia. And now, well, black can take an F3 or black can move this knight away, right? Knight A5, probably is the most natural move attacking this bishop on B3, but then after knight h4, you know, white has so many attacking ideas. For example, knight f5, followed by queen d2, and suddenly this king on g8 is completely naked, right? And black will struggle to protect that position. Uh, chess master is asking, hi, how do you get the board on chess 24 to look like that? This is actually a software uh, that uh, our, you know, IT people created in the past. So uh, it's not open for everyone. But it looks cool, right? This looks cool, this, this, this software. Knight a5 and knight h4. And I'm really scared about black's position here because knight f5 is coming and uh, I don't see any reaction uh, from black's uh, perspective. So I think uh, white hair is clearly better in this position. Maybe you can take on b3. This way, the queen later cannot come to d2 and e3 is also protected with this bishop on b6. So this is what Kovanova did in this position. And now maybe you have to counterattack. That's right. Rook e8, putting pressure against the pawn on e4. Or on chess 24. Probably knight c3 is actually a software just developing the last minor piece and also protecting the center pawn on e4, right? After knight c3, white's idea is the same probably. Knight a5. And when you leave this square free on h4, this bishop could also join the party, right? The bishop on h4 is creating a nasty pin against the knight on f6. By the way, guys, uh, I was last year on Jerva in Tunisia, not last year, I believe two years ago because of this, you know, pandemic. Um, and uh, I'm going back this year on February, so I invite all of you to go there. There is a few open tournaments. There is a master's tournament with uh, 10 grand masters, but also an open tournament where you guys can participate. It's a nice uh, place for holidays, actually. Um, you know, there are many flamingos in the island and, uh, you know, uh, many camels. You can also uh, use these quarks, right? These uh, motorcycles uh, in the sands. In the sands, sorry. So it's quite interesting. So hotel is great. Tournament is great. So it's, uh, it's a place I recommend to all of you guys. So Queen C2, that means... After this move, the knight is free to go, right? The knight can jump to c4. So knight h5. Now, uh, I believe knight f5 is a very natural move. And um, probably black's idea is to bring the queen to protect the hc pawn. Because if you play king h7 suddenly, you know, if this diagonal gets opened, black could be in real, real, real trouble. So um, how to protect that pawn on h6? My idea probably is to take on g3 and then play queen g5. Um, black bishops are extremely, extremely 
dangerous. I don't like this move because of bishop h4 now, and the knight is a little bit stupid on h5. So bishop h4, and if you go to queen, uh, sorry, to g6, then knight e7 fort is winning actually some material. And uh, but 50 seconds for it, but not 20 seconds for Kovanova. Remember, there's a lot in stake. Like the winner goes to Jerva, uh, you know, to participate in that tournament. And also, there is some cash for the winners in this tournament. All right, so knight c4, white wants to capture this bishop in b6 because it is extremely strong piece, right? It's the only good black piece in this position. And uh, let's see how uh, white proceeds now. You can always bring this knight to e3, but she decided to go to a5. Makes a lot of sense attacking this bishop, and now this knight uh, finds this brilliant square on c6, knight e7. Actually, now there's a lot of contemporary with this move. g3, come on, Kovanova. You can play g3, trying to create the chaos, but she went for bishop to b4. A double attack to the rook and the knight. 30 seconds for Anastasia Botnaruk. Sorry for my Russian pronunciation, guys. You know, Russian was never easy for a Spanish guy, you know. Knight c6, now black is collecting this rook, and material is even uh, right now. Material is balanced. Knight f4, uh, black is activating this minor piece, but the problem is these two pieces are completely out of play. Bishop d8, now the threat was 97 check, so this is why black removes the queen, stopping 97 idea. And uh, bishop c7, white starts collecting all the fruits, right? And, uh, you know, white is clearly better right now. You have this protected pass pawn on the d file that can be, you know, very important in the uh, last uh, part of the game. So queen d5, now black says, you know what? I'm just going to go h5, h4, trying to create a lot of chaos once again. 10 seconds for Anastasia, h4. Now knight takes e5. She just went under the pawn. You know, the, the, the bar is having a heart attack here in chess 24. This happens even when the best chess players, you know, are playing G3. Now uh, white stops, blacks attack. Now knight G6 back, going forward with E6, pushing the pawn. E6. Now this looks very, very sad for black once again. And uh, I like this diagonal. I like bringing this bishop to this diagonal, actually. So queen D2. And now this is checkmate. She didn't see. Queen g6 was checkmate, followed by bishop e5. So this is why black goes back with queen g5 and uh, e7. The pawn is super protected. Queen f6. And there's no way to capture that pawn. After queen e7, queen g6, once again, this is checkmate. This is 1-0 for Anastasia Bodnaruk. And we go for the second game. How are you guys doing? How is life? You know, I'm here in Ibiza. I'm living in Ibiza in Spain. But now, actually, in two days, I'm going to Dubai for the World Chess Championship. I'll be doing commentary from there in Spanish. Um, you know, it's my first time in a World Championship, so it's going to be super, super fun. And uh, so we have uh, 65 people here on Twitch, 46 on YouTube. So people are arriving to this match. And uh, time scramble is hilarious, right? It's just, uh, you know, it's just uh, a mess in chess. This is why chess is so fun, you know? It's so exciting because even the best chess players in the world, they blunder everything. They don't know what they're doing, right? And uh, bishop to c4, this is uh, the Nidorf. And now as you can see, uh, you know, white is going to fight for the wave square on d5. And black is going to do the same, basically. So d5 is the key square in all these variations. Black will try to create counterplay along uh, the C file. And, uh, but knight a5 was played, rook d1. Now, knight d5 is a threat, so black should remove the queen from the d file, right? For example, queen c7, maybe after taking on b3, right? So now a takes b3 and probably queen c7 or even knight d7, prophylactic move against knight a c5. Because this is just a clean pawn up if black doesn't do anything, right? And uh, all right, so now it's it's best to take with the a pawn usually, right? Pawns uh, toward the center. And uh, yes, pawns always towards uh, the center, right? 
This is the way to play in chess. So queen c7, there's no knight e5 anymore. And now I like to move bishop to g5, always removing some defender from the, the d5 square, right? So rook c8, and now usually you take an f6, and then the problem is you cannot jump so easily to d5 because c2 is under attack, right? So maybe you can start with rook a to c1 or even knight e1 after taking on f6 in order to jump uh, with the knight to d5. You guys agree? Well, rook c1 was played. Now you could think about playing knight h5. This is why I prefer to take right away an f6 because knight h5, after taking on e7, queen takes e7, then the f4 square is extremely tasty um, for black, right? Because, you know, the knight is uh, coming to f4, you know, hitting the queen with a tempo. You play g3, then the light squares are extremely weak. So this is why I prefer to take right away uh, on f6. Let's see what Anastasia Abadnaruk does. She goes for knight h5. Very interesting, very strong move in my opinion. And now maybe you shouldn't take on uh, e7 because knight f4 intermediate move could be even uh, interesting, right, in that position. So probably you have to go back with the bishop to e3 or d2, but that was not uh, our initial plan, right? Good evening, Brian. How are you, man? So, where are you guys from in the chat? So, I see we have a lot of some Spanish people that I usually, uh, you know, have them in the Spanish broadcast. So, rook takes d5. Wow. Bishop takes g5, knight takes e5, and knight f4. This is just a fork, and Anastasia could be winning so much real. It's pretty easy to spot, right? Boom! Ra -ta 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 -ta. Knight f4, now, you know, black is just winning some material. Anastasia could be winning 2-0 if nothing strange happens uh, after, you know, this fork, because there is no way uh, to attack the 8-7 pawn. So this is much better for black now. Italy from Indonesia, Brian uh, from Germany. Hello. Hello, wie geht's? Alles gut? I used to live in Germany for three years in Hamburg. It's one of my favorite cities. I was working at the university uh, in Hamburg for three years, but my German is still terrible, man, you know, because everybody speaks English there. So I was kind of lazy to learn the language. Now I regret a lot, you know, not to have learned German, you know. But uh, anyway, it was a good time for me. I was there from 2013 to 2016, 17. And, uh, you know, had a lot of fun in Germany. Knight f3, and now f5 looks very, very strong. Once again, gaining more space, and this queen is completely out of play. You're going to go maybe to g6 or h5, right? You're gonna, you cannot come to the center of the board. And uh, queen f6. Now e4 could be a threat, right? The point is you attack the knight and also the pawn on b2 at the same time, and you can also play b5 in order to give some open fires to this rook, right? That makes a lot of sense. And this is what Anastasia did. She is playing extremely well in this match. From America, Zita. From the States or where? And uh, I'm actually traveling to South America uh, in January. I'm going, uh, you know, to work with the Bolivian Federation. So I've never been to Bolivia. And... Uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be there for two weeks and then I'll play a tournament in Brazil, Florianopolis, a beautiful island as well. You guys have some vacations. Jerva is a nice place. Florianopolis in Brazil is a nice place. So, you know, chess and holidays, it's always a good combination, right? Even for grandmasters, don't think that, uh, you know, we love to play in Siberia, for example. No, 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 no. We love, you know, cool places. Uh, Siberia probably is also cool, you know? But I mean, we, we usually play in, in some places that we, we like, you know? So rook c8, and now the rook is coming to the seventh rank, to the second rank, whatever, right? And, you know, white has no counterattack in this position at all, so you can see. And, uh, for example, yeah, queen f7 was played, attacking this weakness on d5, very tough to protect it. You, can't, you cannot go queen d3 because of e4, if you go queen d2, then rook c2 is even stronger, right? So I think, uh, you know, 
why can't resign in this position? Rook C2, and now this pawn is hanging as well. The other guy is coming to C2, putting some pressure against the Facundo pawn. But, uh, you know, White says, okay, you can grab the B2 pawn. At least I'm going to try to, you know, uh, collect the D6 pawn and then try to create some chaos once again. But Anastasia says, you know what? This is not going to happen, my friend. Just protect D6 pawn and... Uh, and no contemplate for white in this position, right? So 20 seconds for a Kobanova. B2 is hanging. Rook C1 is coming as well, simplifying the position. Also, Queen C5. You guys know, like, when you have an advantage, it's usually a very nice idea to trade pieces, you know? So you minimize the risks, right? So this is why you trade a lot of pieces in chess. So Rook B2, H5. You know, trying to open some lines, trying to make this black skin more weak. But, you know, Anastasia closes the position. G4, last try. She wants to come to E4 with the queen. Probably taking on G4 is a big mistake because of queen E4 check. I'm not sure because even after king H8 looks winning for black. But there's no need to do that. And Anastasia goes for E4 attacking this knight, knight D4. And for example, queen C3. Insisting on the queen trade looks very natural for black here, and uh, black's gonna win this game. So, rook e8 that's pretty strange move. Knight takes f5, really like knight e6, followed by g takes f5. But okay, knight takes f5, and you know, Anastasia is uh, is not so sure. A 93, and suddenly, I don't know how white did it. But suddenly this knight is protecting d5, is protecting g4, and rook c1 is coming. White is trying to create some counterplay, and she managed to do so. Rook c6, queen c1, now rook c8 is coming. Black has to be extremely careful in this position. Otherwise, you know, this rook and queen are penetrating, and another five. Wow, Kovanova, you know, counterattacking rook d7, for example, Queen c2, attacking the rook and the pawn on e4. Probably rook d3 is the only move. Now I like queen e2 in order to collect this guy on e4. Even rook c8 looks very interesting. Now, you know, looking for some mates on g7 on h8. But, uh, you know, black stops that. Now queen a1 check, king g2. e4 is hanging. Probably black should go back to e5 to protect that pawn. 15 seconds for an assassin, but now queen e5. Good, good move. Centralizing the queen, protecting... This pawn protecting d6, but now rook c8. And uh, queen f4, probably threatening to go. Queen f3, even rook d2 looks extremely strong right now. But this is the safest choice for black. Now the queens are off the board and the danger has disappeared. And now you can start pushing all your pawns. This rook makes a fantastic this defensive, you know, Task here now, rook b5, and then you can start pushing all these guys. And uh, Anastasia should win this game. Rook b7, for example, in order to push, 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 baby, push, baby, completely busted, right? Rook c7 check now, rook b4, very strong move. Intend to go rook c2, that's right. And now, rook e4, threatening the knight. And checkmate on e1 should be enough for black to win the game. You can have a couple of checks, but not more than that, right? Check, check, and king f7, and now you can resign the game. King e7. And this is this is the end, guys. This is 2-0 for Anastasia. Remember, the winner is the one arriving to three and a half points. Best of six. Right? So, Kovanova finally resigns 2-0 for Anastasia. And uh, that's right. <laughs> I see we have a lot of Spanish uh, speakers because they are talking about Facun. Facun is the way we call the f bomb, Facundo, you know, and we say that Facundo solves all the problems all the time. Don't listen to us, guys. <laughs> and, uh, all right. So I guess you guys uh, have a lot of expectations about the World Championship, right? Who is your favorite, Magnus or Nepo? You think Nepo can fight against Magnus or it will be a disaster for the Russian? I think Nepo is uh, capable of doing the best and the worst, right? We've seen that already. 
But he's a tremendous, strong player. And probably he has prepared extremely, extremely well for this uh, World Championship match. I believe in victory of, of Anastasia, he says. Wachow says. Nepo can't, uh, can't mess with Magnus. Yeah, Magnus is the big favorite for sure. Actually, Magnus was preparing the World Championship in my, in my region, in Andalusia, in the south of Spain. Have you been here? So I'm actually from Granada. It's a city in the south of Spain. And, uh, you know, there is great uh, mix of cultures. No, actually, it was the last victory that the Muslims had in, in, in Spain. And probably, you know, the, the Alhambra, it's a very beautiful monument. And uh, it's, it's, it, it's cheap. You know, we have uh, good tapas and good people. So you guys are more than welcome. All right. So once again, we have the Spanish Rui Lopez variation. And now Covanova changes and goes for this Knight to G E7 jet setup. Sorry. Black CD usually is to proceed with G6 and Bishop G7 going for the fianchetto, right? That's an Italian word. G6 followed by Bishop G7. That's the idea. And uh, D4, Bishop B5. And I, I like here the move Bishop C2. I think it's the strongest in my opinion. At least this is what uh, theory says uh, in the last years. And now Knight C3 and D6 from Kobanova. A3, good prophylaxis against Bishop D4. Now short castle. Black has to do something with this pawn. Usually mm, the knight comes to A5 and then C5 is pushed. That's right. And you could think about going B3 of it, neutralize this guy on A5, right? After B3, the knight on A5 looks a little bit clumsy because uh, this knight cannot jump to C4. But instead, she decided to go for A4. Now I believe B4 is the, you know, the best move here for black, right? B4 and now knight E2 probably. This knight can be regrouped to g3 later. You know, g3 makes a good job protecting e4. And now c5 finally. Black wants to, you know, open this diagonal for this strong bishop on g7. Right? And uh, b3, uh, white says, you know what? I'm also bringing a bishop to this nice diagonal on b2. Let's fight against this monster on g7 which is the best move, sorry, the best piece uh, by far uh, on Black's position. So now uh, Black can, uh, you know, blow the center up with the move D5. What's going on there if I just play D5 here in this, in this position? Otherwise, you can continue with Bishop B7, but I think this gives White an important tempo in order to, you know, uh, finish development. And later on, uh, White could try to connect the rooks as well. C4 is always an interesting idea for Black in these positions. So a lot of ideas in mind. Um, how many wins uh, needed to qualify? Ahmad is saying, well, the first one reaching three and a half points uh, wins the match. So at this moment it's 2-0 for Anastasia. So how do we proceed here? I like the move also Bishop F4. I think this Bishop in these diagonals, uh, you know, uh, is even more dangerous, right? The bishop on f4 could be threatening the move d takes c5. And she went for rook b1, and now d5 is also a possibility once you have removed the rook from this diagonal, right? d5 followed by uh, bishop f4. Looks very interesting. The d6 point could be attacked in the future, so uh, the push with e5 could be, uh, you know, a nightmare for black in certain positions. And the problem for black is this knight on a5. So she finally decides to go for c4, and I just like the move d5. That's right. Forcing this bishop to go back to d7 or c8, and then you can even collect this pawn on c4, followed by some bishop d3, intending to create some pressure against a6, right? And uh, so, I mean, you have only two squares, d7 or c8. So she goes back to c8 because on d7, you know, d6 pawn was hanging. And now knight d4 from Anastasia. She is playing an extremely strong chess today. And uh, yeah, the knight controls a c6 square. I mean, it's true that you cannot go to c6 right now because black has two important pieces controlling this square. But also, as I told you, you can simply proceed by bringing the rook to e1. And in the future, you can think about 
pushing this pawn to e5. Not now, of course, because knight takes e5, just attacks this bitch. So c takes b3, and now uh, white can decide uh, if to take with the bishop or the knight, so bishop b3 uh, came. Now uh, queen b3 makes a lot of sense, right? Connecting the rooks, but she took with the rook. a5 is always a possibility, a possibility, sorry, but the knight on b5 could be doing a great job as well, attacking this pawn on d6. It's true that black can play bishop a6, and there is a pin on this diagonal. So this is why knight b5, it may be not so strong, right? Because I, I believe now bishop a6 is the only move in order to uh, to fight. But she went for rook b6. Well, that's also protecting the d6 pawn. And now you can improve the position step by step, maybe bring this knight to d4, going rook e1, right? Queen to d3 or d2. So uh, I believe rook e1 is the best move right now because bishop d4 could be an idea. Well, it's always, you know, very tough to get rid of this bishop in g7, right? It's like your boyfriend or girlfriend, right? You love him so much, this Vianchetto bishop, right? I mean, I would never take on d4 in this position. I would never do it because after queen takes d4, then, you know, the, the dark squares are so weak. There are so many ideas with bishop a8, six. You know, to checkmate this black skin that I would never do, I would never take on d4. I, I don't know about you guys, but, uh, you know, for me, this bishop is even more important than a rook in this kind of positions. Rook c1 was played by Anastasia. Now, uh, her threat is just to go rook c7. So this is why uh, Kobanova fights for the c file. So this is a fight a fight over the c file. Now, white is saying, you know what? I'm bringing another, another rook to the c file. So I'm just going to take on c8. I'm going to play rook c1, and then I'm going to, you know, finish you off with rook c7, right? And Astasia is playing just uh, like a monster today. You are more than right. So rook c5 is being played by Kovanova, bishop b3. Now, this looks so scary for black, but this bishop, you know, looking with x-rays, these two rooks. So, for example, knight c6 could be an idea in this position. So I don't know what to play. Rook b8, good move from Kovanova. No more rooks in this diagonal. Uh, knight c6. Wow, what's going on here? This is just uh, too crazy. I don't understand anything. Knight takes c6, bishop takes c5, and then d takes c5. There's a pin on this file. Wow, Anastasia Blonder. She didn't realize that after bishop takes c5, there was a pin on the d file. And now this is just a pawn up for black. So Anastasia needs a miracle to win this game. So to win this game, now black has black is a pawn up and black has the bishop pair. I mean, we have we we have been telling you guys, we've been telling you guys how important is the bishop pair during 10 years already in chess 24. Not 10 years because chess 24 was launched in 2014, I believe, but at least six, seven years. We've been telling you guys all the time why the bishop pair is so important. And even more in open positions, as you can see now, these two bishops are like two knives, right? To, to cut some Spanish ham. You know, by the way, Spanish ham is just amazing, guys. If you come to, to Spain, ask for jamón ibérico. So queen e6, and now this pawn is also super strong, right? Knight b5 has been played, but now you can just take here and then start pushing with b3. That's right. A4, A3, B6, now B2 looks strong. And for example, Queen A2. I believe you're gonna take on B2 at this, at this moment. Otherwise, A3, A2 is just winning. So I believe you're gonna take on B2 and then try to create some problems against the, the Black King. She didn't. And now Queen A2 followed by A3. This is just game over. She didn't do it. So once again, you got this option. Okay, Queen H2. Bishop e5 check, and uh, queen f3, rook b2, she finally did it. And now bishop h6, it's a very, very strong idea. So this is why she went for f6, but now queen a2 check, and she grabs the pawn, and I even prefer white's position right now, because this skin is actually very safe, and you got this pass pawn, at least white is not worse by any means right now because this pawn is just so strong. 
Now they start playing with the increment, right? And now Bishop eight six. Whoa, she just blundered. Bishop eight six and uh, Black resigns. I don't know how Anastasia did it, but she managed even to win this game, and uh, she gets three zero. And she's only half point of qualifying for the finals. So now we got five minute break. So I can talk to you guys, right? And uh, you know, how's life? How's life? So as I told you, the winner will go to the Gerber Chess Festival. It's an open tournament in Tunisia, in the, the north of Africa, in the beautiful island of Jerba and uh, so I was there two years ago as I told you and yeah so they're having a five minute breaks you know time to uh, go for some water to go to the toilet actually Kovanova needs a miracle in order to qualify actually she needs to win three games in a row and actually in this tournament in Jerba you know Jerusalem I know singing is not my thing, but uh, it's a very famous group, actually. They're performing uh, in the open ceremony of this tournament. And uh, two years ago, Karpov was there, Judith Polgar was there, and I was given a very difficult task because uh, Judith Polgar was uh, doing a simultaneous exhibition, right? She was facing a lot of players, and then, you know, uh, you know, there was no more time because uh, we had to go all for some dinner, right? So they uh, assigned me the task of deciding the result of those games. I mean, the, and in some games, Judith uh, was uh, maybe a pawn down or she was worse. So I had to tell her, okay, you did, you're losing this game. So I was so, you know, it was so difficult for me. <laughs> but she she's a very, very nice person. And it was uh, it was a great time. And uh, Queen A2, what a big miss opportunity, right, Ahmed? You are more than right. I mean, Queen A2 uh, followed by A3, this looked like the end of the game, right? But this is what uh, chess is about. You have to fight it till the end. And, uh, you know, you get some chances. This is why, you know, the best chess players in the world, they are fighting till the end. Because even though if you get one, uh, I mean, you get one draw out of 1,000 games, that makes a difference, you know. And good players always fight till the end. All right. So... I believe we have two more minutes till they start. And remember, after this semifinal, we'll have another one. We'll have uh, Candela from Argentina. She's only 15 years old. She's a super strong player, very promising. You know, this is not her real level, I would say, 2058. And uh, she's facing Alina Bibol. She's an uh, international master from Russia as well. So it's going to be very tough for her. But for sure, she will learn a lot from this experience. Where are you from? I am from Granada. Mm, I'm from Granada. This is in the south of Spain, in Andalusia. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful city, actually. In March, for example, March, April, you can go and ski because we have some mountains called Sierra Nevada. And then it's already hot. It's, it's already hot enough that you can go to the beach 30 minutes by car and swim. So you can go and ski. And then you take the car 30 minutes and then you're in the beach. Um, I'm going there. It's not figure anything. Welcome, welcome. So you guys saw that we're going to have a lot of commentary in English for the World Championship, right? I believe the shows are already created in Chess 24. Let me just see. So I can tell you our commentators in English. So, yes, here, let me open. Yeah, we have uh, 
we have David Howell and our usual tour uh, commentary team, right, with Kaja and Hoska Jovanka. And then you have Anish Giri and Judith Polgar in another commentary room. So, great. Okay, the fourth game starts. And uh, D4 and Anastasia goes for, once again, the neither variation. One of the most, uh, you know, aggressive defenses in chess. Bishop e3 and knight f3. Once again, she goes for this setup with the bishop on c4, fighting for the d5 square. Short castle and bishop e6. If you take on e6, that only helps black because it's true that you have two uh, double pawns, but, uh, you know, the e6 pawn controls the d5 square and f5 square and also the f file gets opened. So this is why you never take an e6 in those positions. And now she took with the c pawn. This, this is very strange in my opinion. But now, of course, the queen on c7 is not going to be uh, comfortable because after rook h, c1, then knight d5 solves the threat. So interesting idea. Now you got to think how to play with the black pieces. The queen on c7 is not well placed. Queen on e8 looks, looks natural, but also, you know, it's not ideal. And bishop g5, and Anastasia probably is going to repeat her last idea of going knight to h5, because if these dark square bishops are traded, then f4 is extremely, is extremely weak square, right? Um, I'm going to, in early December, to visit in Alhambra, driving through Al Andalusia. That's, that's nice to hear. So rook d8, and now, once again, I like bishop f6, followed by knight d5. This is always the idea in these positions. And you never take with a pawn. Yeah, if black takes d5, you never take with a pawn, please. Because this way, if you take with a piece, the d6 pawn is always uh, a nice weakness that you can attack. If you take with a pawn, you close uh, the file, and then you never manage to attack the d6 pawn. So rook d1, and now many interesting ideas for white. For example, knight d2 followed by knight f1, knight e3. Right, looking for some more light squares. She went for 91. And now I think black has to react somehow. For example, with f5, the Facundo pawn solves the situation once again. And uh, queen c6, rook d3. She went for rook d3. What's the idea of rook d3? Well, not so sure. But uh, now this knight. You know, I would love to bring it to e3. For example, g3 followed by knight g2, knight e3 could be an idea in the, you know, short-term idea. Uh, I believe black has to react uh, somehow on the king side. For example, g6 followed by f5 or even f5 straight away. Instead, she went for queen b5. That allows knight c2. Before, it was not possible because there was a queen on c6. So this is why uh, knight c2 is actually a nice idea now, right? And uh, if you manage to bring a knight on d5 or f5, this is almost game over for black. So this is why black needs to react dynamically uh, pretty, pretty fast. Mm. Knight c2 was played. Very nice move from Komanova. And, uh, well, I think you have to play f5 right now. Otherwise... You know, knight e3 is coming. Also, knight a3 followed by knight c4 looks interesting because there's going to be tremendous pressure against the d6 pawn, right? You can even triple heavy pieces on the d5, and with the knight on c4, black will have, you know, difficult task to protect the d6 pawn. All right, so one minute for Anastasia. She goes for queen c6. Interesting move because now knight e3 is not possible since the e4 pawn is just hanging. So that means at least 93 is not possible, but you can go to b4. Yeah, she's out playing now Anastasia. Very nice game by uh, Kovanova, right? Now knight will arrive to d5, and you have full control on the light squares. Black will try to, you know, to play solid, probably with bishop d8 in this position, right? Controlling these knight jumps, right? From d8, you control properly. Um, the knight on on d5, but of course this is just a nightmare for, for white. And uh, so what to play? Only 40 seconds for Anastasia. Yeah, bishop d8 is a typical move, right? In this position. She went for rook e8, 
you cannot take the pawn on d6 since uh, there is a pin right here, right? The rook on d3 is just pinned, so you, ne you never take on, on d6. You can play maybe queen h5, right? In to go knight e7 followed by rook d6. Also, you can bring the rook to the attack to a3, but she goes for a4. And now, well, queen a5, you can always take this pawn on d6, but I'm not so sure about this move because this knight is so strong that you don't want to trade it for this bishop, even if you get a pawn, right? I mean, I, I would never take on e7 right now. You can always uh, improve the position step by step. You can play g3, you can play king g2, you can push h4, h5, right? And black has basically no reaction. There's no hurry to capture this pawn, this bishop, sorry, on, on e7 and this pawn on d6. Because actually, you will end up being a pawn up, but you have a double pawn. So this is why I believe this knight is uh, far more important than this bishop. So best just to, to conserve it. To keep it. So queen g4. Now, of course, knight e7 is a big threat since uh, the rook on c8 is just hanging. So what should we do here with the black pieces? Maybe queen d8, sad move. Or maybe just bring in this rook to d8 in order to stop all those tactical threats. But 10 seconds only for Anastasia. He, she goes back. Queen d8 fighting. One more move, you know. And uh, after rook g3, you can play g6. She takes on e7, not so sure about this move. I'm not a big fan of taking this pawn on d6. I think now uh, black has some decent uh, drawing chances in the future. Rook d7, she wants to trade one more rook. She wants to occupy the seventh rank. That's always a good idea in end games, right? And uh, queen b4, queen f3, attacking and protecting at the same time. Rook f8 from Anastasia. And now you can centralize the queen. You can bring it to d5, right? The queen on d5 does a great job, you know, putting more pressure on f7 and also on b7. You can also try to start an attack on the king side with your pawns, right? g3, very humble move. And now b5. Well, only 10 seconds for Anastasia. 58 for Kobanova. And uh, let's see. Because, you know, you are a pawn up, but you have double pawns. Rook e7. The rook was attacked. And uh, queen, queen c5, you know, Anastasia is fighting very well. Queen f6. And now you can start grabbing these pawns. Queen c1 followed by queen b2. Only three seconds for Anastasia. Now rook b8 is coming. Great idea. Probably they are reaching four versus three. And this should be a draw. This is actually a theoretical draw in practice. It's not that easy, right? You have to, of course, Kobanova will try, but this should be a draw. And especially when two strong players are playing, right? So we've seen this a lot. F2. And now take stakes. Rook H2. Yeah. This is nothing special for white. And Anastasia is probably qualifying to the finals already. And she'll be waiting the winner of the second semifinal. Rook G1. In F3. Rook H1. Now she starts pushing. E6, a nice trick, right? King G8, so that's why. To stop E6 ideas. Now probably she's going to check till tomorrow, right? Rook F1. And now you want to keep playing. You have to go back with the rook. King G2. And just go back to E1. Whenever this king goes to the third rank, you start checking once again with the rook on F1, G1, or H1, right? King H6. Now Black says, oh, all right, if you don't uh, attack my F7 pawn, why not to go a, a little bit up with the king, right? Maybe even trying to think of going king h5. But then in that case, then f7 could suffer. So this is why it's just best to, you know, to stay with the king on the seventh rank, protecting all your soldiers, right? And nothing bad's gonna happen to your opposition. 
Now, Kobanova says, all right, I'm going to try to push h5. Probably is the only try that I have in this position, and then play these two versus one. And now f6 should be a dead draw. f6 should be a dead draw. She didn't go for it. Now f6, once again, it's very, very drawish. She doesn't go for it. Now, of course, she don't trade rooks, right? Because the king endgame could be completely lost. But instead, you just skip the rooks going. And, uh, you know, nothing should happen to Anastasia's position. All right, guys. Rook C2. So who's your favorite band blitzer in English? So is it uh, Peter Swittler? Is this Magnus Carlsen? So what's the, joy, the show that you enjoy the most in, in Chess 24? I mean, when we're talking about band blitz, of course. One takes now, rook takes king f6. Um, it's getting tricky. It's getting tricky, yeah? Rook e1, five seconds. Now she's going to grab this. Whoa, she just blundered, mate. I don't believe it. She had to stay on the e file in order to cover on e8. After the check, she went rook e5, and now rook c8 checkmate. This is 3 1. And uh, Anastasia just blundered in a completely drawn position and they'll need to go for the fifth game what a blunder by Anastasia oh my god alright man so she goes for the Philidor now I'm a big fan of uh, Kovanova Philidor is my favorite defense actually I recorded a 45 video series in Chessable right about the Philidor I actually uh, tried to find many interesting ideas, and this is the most trendy line. Uh, sorry, the line with G3. It's a very positional line. You know, why is just trying to go step by step? A3, G4, Bishop E3, Queen D2, even F4 ideas. There is a game between Magnus Carlsen and uh, Karyakin, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, from the last Chess 24 tour. C5, now... Knight b5 is a possibility, but then d6 is well protected, so it doesn't make any sense. So this is why Anastasia goes back to e2, maybe intend to go to d5 in the near future. She does it, you know, d5 is a very weak square, and she's going to try to occupy it. Knight to f4 and uh, a6. Probably black has to create some counterattack on the queen side by pushing b5, right? And then maybe bring this bishop to b7. But she went for knight d5. She doesn't waste, uh, you know, any tempo. And she occupies the d5 square, which is, of course, you know, the key square in this position. So bishop b6 straight away. And now Anastasia is okay with the draw. So maybe she can try to go back to f4, just intend to gain the bishop pair. And if black goes back, we can reach that repetition that I was talking about. Right? Mm. So two minutes, 30 seconds for Anastasia. And F4. Well, I'm not so sure about this move. I don't like it at all. Now I think I can even take on D5. And after pawn takes E5, rook takes E1, queen takes E1, knight B4, attacking C2 and D5. I just don't like this move on f4 because you had this square for the bishop in the future to put pressure against the uh, weak pawn on d6. And, uh, you know, the king is a little bit uh, exposed after sending Facundo to the action, right? So this is why I just uh, I'm not a big fan of this f4 move. This is the first time in history where Facundo doesn't solve the issue, I have to tell you. But all right. Mm. So probably bishop takes d5 is the, you know, or even b5 could be an option. But b5 is just a blunder, right? Because of knight takes f6 and e5. This is the idea of f4. Very, very tricky. Yeah, Anastasia. So b5, knight f6, queen f6, e5, and then the knight on c6 or sign. So Kovanova doesn't fall for the trick. And she goes rook b8, a useful move in these positions. You know, removing the rook from this diagonal where it could be in danger at some point. So bishop b3 from Anastasia. 
developing the last minor piece, getting ready to play queen d2 in order to connect the rooks, bring the rook to d1, and then start putting pressure on the d6 pawn, right? So uh, she's 30 seconds up in the clock, which is good news for her. And now b5. Oh, she just blundered with this trick. We were talking about boom, e5, boom, 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 boom. She goes for it. E5, boom, boom. And now Bishop takes c6. This is just big advantage for white. Anastasia is a piece up in this game. And she shouldn't have any trouble to convert this position, right? Just a full piece up. The king is quite safe right now. And if you take on f4, then bishop takes, and suddenly this rook is also in trouble, right? Bye-bye. Bishop takes, and now pawn takes e5 could be very natural because if queen takes, then bishop f4, after queen d4 check, king h2, double attacking the bishop on h3, and also the rook on b8, right? So that means that probably you got to take an F3, and uh, this is just a terrible position for, for Black. Maybe she's got to resign. And remember, guys, after this semifinal, five minutes later, we'll start with a second semifinal where a young Argentinian girl, only 15 years old, will try to defeat an international master from Russia. Remember, they all qualified yesterday from a tournament with hundreds of women that played in a Swiss tournament, and uh, it's going to be entertaining. So, pawn takes e5. Now, yeah, only 20 seconds left for Copanova. Queen e5. Now, bishop f4 is just a winning move, right? Queen d4 check, king h2. And, uh, well, you get another exchange, right? Now, king h2. This is the key move, right? No more checks. One piece under attack, another piece under attack. This is going to be a whole rook up for white. And that's too much, right? In these levels. That's too much. Rook c8, and you can just take the bishop on h3, since the bishop on c6 is just protected by this beautiful queen. So there's no reason why not to take this guy on c6 now. You know, you can do so many stuff here. You can play bishop e5. G4 is never an idea because of queen takes c4. You can even play bishop d5. Then there's going to be a lot of trouble against f7. And, uh, well, you have so many options, right? Well, bishop e5, g4, maybe. Queen takes, queen takes, king takes, rook takes d6. Still just a piece up for white, but maybe there's no need. She goes for bishop f4. That makes a lot of sense, you know. And now probably Kovanova has to take this bishop on f4. And uh, queen takes f4. And you can play rook d1, maybe, intermediate move, attacking this, this queen. And later on, bringing this knight to d5. She goes for queen f5, threatening checkmate in one move. So bishop g7 in order to skip with the king to f8. But knight d5. Rook e8, and uh, I don't know. I just like the move bishop g2, bringing all my pieces back. Knight e7 and queen c8, that's even better. Rook up for Anastasia, who qualified for the finals here in chess 24. h8, now rook d1, probably followed by rook d8, or even queen f5. Last chance, Facundo trying to cover the h7 square, but it's not going to be enough for sure. Now, rook d8, and uh, black will have to resign. Very strong, Anastasia Botnaruk, the national master from Russia. We have the first player who qualifies for the final. So now we just make a small break. Now we're gonna uh, place. We're gonna uh, put you this uh, beautiful video about Jerba, and then I'm I'll be coming with you guys in four minutes to talk about life before we start with the, with the other semi final. So Bunny, please put the video.
¿Vale? Bane, bane. Dime. Jerusalem, Hey, what's up? We're back for the second semi-final where the Russian international master Alina Bibol will face the young Argentinian player Candela Francisco, woman feeder master, improving a lot in the last months, in the last years. So for sure it's going to be very, very interesting. And uh, I'm sure you guys like the video 
where there were a lot of, you know, monster dancing like Star Wars, right? And this is uh, because there is a beautiful uh, place in Tunisia where actually Star Wars was uh, filmed. So, and uh, last year, I mean, last time I was there, I didn't visit, but this year we'll go there for sure. You know, it looks so beautiful. And uh, okay. So um, Alina with the white pieces, Candela with the black pieces. Let's see what happens. It's 7 p.m. here in, in Spain. And we're enjoying some chess. Um, as I told you, a few days, the World Championship will start in Dubai. We're all so much looking forward to that, right? Sorry, guys, I'm going to open the chat here. Yes, the place is called Tatooine. Thanks, thanks, thanks for the information, Sarat, Saratustra. I didn't know the name of, of the place. All right, so E4, C5, Sicilian. Let's see what kind of Sicilians. Wow, she goes for the O'Kelly, right? And now D5, pawn takes D5. We are going to reach some isolated pawn structure after black takes on D5. But uh, Candela didn't take on D5 now. Black CD is playing knight B6 and finally captured this pawn on D5. So can you stop that? I don't think so. Mm, I like the pawn on D3 in these positions because you can play something like queen b3, and when black takes on c4, then you can recapture with the pawn on c4. But with the pawn on d4, this is actually not possible, and of course, black will take on c4. So bishop b3, and now knight b6 makes a lot of sense, finally, recapturing this guy on d5. So, Candela playing extremely fast in the first game, knight b6, rook e1, now knight takes d5, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes, queen takes, rook e7, and bishop e6, and the rook is trapped. Did you guys follow me? Well, you got rook c7 in that position, I believe, but black would definitely enjoy a nice compensation, even with moves like bishop g4, putting pressure against f3 and d4. So Candela took it, no problem. And now bishop g5, I think this is okay for black, right? After rook e7, you can play bishop e g4, and probably the d4 point is going to hang at the end. So this is why Alina played um, knight e5 in this position, stopping, of course, b5. b5 is just a lucid move because of knight c6 followed by bishop d5 and knight e7. So e6 reinforcing knight makes a lot of sense. Queen f3 from Alina. She wants to complete development with bishop d2 probably and then bring a rook to the action, maybe to c1, maybe to d1. By the way, guys, have you seen Ali Reza Firusa? What did he do today? Can you guys tell me? Because if he wins, I think he will become the world number two and uh, the, uh, the youngest player to reach 2,800 feeder rating points. That's completely insane. Candela goes for rook b8. I don't understand this move because you cannot go b5 because of knight c6. So I don't see the point of going rook b8. And uh, but not easy for black to complete development, right? Because if you play bishop d7, then, you know, white just wins upon on d5. So it's never easy to play a move here with the black pieces. She goes queen d6. And uh, I believe rook c1 should be a decent move. Even h4, h5, h6 sounds to me like a decent plan. But rook c1, probably the most natural move to the human eye. And uh, David Anton won the match. Well, Spain won. That's very nice to hear in the European Championship. So bishop d7. And I really like this, this, this idea with h4, h5, and h6. Right? There we go. Alina. Starting an attack already on the king side with h4. Bishop to c6. Now, I don't see any nasty discovered move with the knight. So this is why uh, Alina doesn't move the queen away and she keeps pushing. She keeps pushing with h5. Knight e7, defensive move, and you can collect this 
Bishop on c6, probably with knight takes c6. Knight takes c6, and you've got this beautiful move, bishop f4. There is a pin here. The rook on b8 could be hanging. I think that's the best choice, but she doesn't go for it. She goes queen f4, keeps everything under protection. d4 is protected, e5 is protected. Mm. Bishop d5. Wow, you got this move. Boom! Knight takes e6. Fantastic. Fantastic trick, because if you take on f4, knight e7 check. Wow. Knight e7 check, followed by bishop f4. Will she spot that? I mean, the bar immediately went nuts, went crazy, right? She didn't see that. I mean, she has it after bishop a check. She has the same idea, and even more beautiful. Now it's extremely beautiful because it is checkmate. But she didn't see. She didn't see knight g6 was... A fantastic shot to finish the game off, but uh, she didn't go for it. And suddenly, Candela is surviving in this position. Wow. Let's see. Maybe rook c8, rook c8, bishop e5 could be a nice idea in order to fight for the dark squares. What a shame, right, Micro? This could have been one of the best finishes, like, in the last years, I would say. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but <laughs> Bishop d6. Now Candela can take on c1 and can play rook c8. That's a very nice trick, once again, in order to fight for the c file, right? Rook c1 and rook c8, because if you take on e7, then rook on c1 is just hanging. So one minute for the Argentinian player. And one minute for Alina Bibol. I think this is the best choice for black and probably the only one, right? Because you, she went for bishop b3 and now you're just losing material after bishop e7, right? Bishop e7 just wins material because there's some checkmate. There's some background problems. Actually, bishop e7 just wins the game. Rook e8, you can just uh, take on c8 and then take on b3. Yes, this is going to be 1-0 for Alina Bibol after this blunder. It was not that easy. And now bishop f8... This is just an exchange up, right? And you can play knight e5 and then rook c7. And black has a lot of background problems. And rook coming to the seventh rank. Yeah, I speak Italian. Is candela in Spain also candle? That's right. Candela means candle. But also in some countries, I mean, they, they, they say candela uh, to mean fire, for example. Fire. Candela is also fire, yeah? But uh, it's also candle. That's right. So rook c7, and then I think that the plan is uh, pretty, pretty easy for white. Just double rooks and then play rook c8 and then win the game, right? Because this king is always in big trouble. And the only way to survive that I see here is to play some sort of f6, but of course this looks extremely scary. With this rook, g5, now rook c1, followed by rook c8, probably Candela's, Candela has to resign, right? f6, now even knight g6. Look at this move, man. Knight g6. If pawn takes h7, mate, <laughs> that was uh, very beautiful. <laughs> you can go back to e5, that's right. Take six, and now this rook coming to g7. She stops that by playing bishop c6. Very nice defensive resource. And. Uh, well, still, I mean, rook f7, Candela is fighting. Candela is fighting, not allowing this rook to enter either the c file or the d file. This bishop is doing a great job. Wow, Candela is fighting like crazy, and then she is forcing Alina to trade rooks, and now it's not going to be easy at all for white, because now black is intent to capture the 8-6 pawn, and now you can start pushing these guys as well. You know, you got two versus one. She goes for g4. I don't like this move because then you find some routes for this skin along the dark squares. And that's not good news. Now, f4 probably. She goes for rook h2, f4 check. Candela is trying to create some counterplay here. Bishop b5 check. Playing a very good chess. Right now, the Argentinian g3. And now a5. Push, push. Push, baby. 
A5, A4, rook H5, now king G6, rook H4, that's a key, and now the rook is gonna get activated along the fourth rank. That was a very nice idea. Rook G7, probably bishop D3, the only way to stop rook takes H7, but now this pawn falls on B7. And, uh, well, you can try to chase the G2 pawn, but white is just much faster. And now white's gonna promote the H pawn and win the game immediately, right? There's no way to stop H8, and this is just gonna be 1-0 for Alina. But uh, Candela is fighting great, is fighting great, the Argentinian. Have you guys been to Argentina at some point in your life? Beautiful country, yeah? Beautiful country. They have some sweet, which is called Dulce de Leche. It's, it's just amazing. If you go to Argentina, just try Dulce de Leche and the meat. The meat is just amazing in Argentina. Mm. And, you know, there are quite some tournaments, you know, chess tournaments. It's a country where, you know, chess is uh, it's a big thing. That's right. So now we go for the French variation, French defense. And uh, this variation with D takes E4, classical French, knight D7. And sorry, guys, but now uh, I don't know what's going on here. I think my software just broke. <laughs> uh, Bunny, can we uh, close and open in one second the software? Okay, guys, once. That's right. One second. That's right. And now we see the board. This is the position. And remember, we, we were in this French variation. Takes, takes. Now, let me just... Uh, Show the clocks and everything. You know, sometimes these softwares they just collapse. Collapse, sorry. There we go. And here we go. Oof. All right, so bishop b4 takes takes. This is a fine end game for black because black has the bishop first, you can see it. B5, rook d1, and bishop d7. And if black wants to, you know, solve the issue with this light square bishop, of course, has to play bishop b7. And now we reach this position where I still prefer white, I would say, because we own the d5 completely. So b4, rook c8, and I don't know, maybe I don't like that much this b4 idea. It's not the bishop on d5 is going to be extremely strong in this position. Right, because there are not going to be some C4 ideas. And she went for A5. I don't understand this move, because I believe I can just take an A5. And if bishop G2, probably Alina missed knight D7, which is a nice intermediate move, right? Probably winning some material. And if you go rook A8, 
You can play a6, just protecting this, this pawn on, on the a5, right? So, Candela, maybe she's got a tiny edge in this position. I would say she's a bit better, but of course not going to be easy. For example, after a6, I can even bring the king to e7. And I don't see a clear way to make any progress here with the white pieces, right? I, am, I have also the idea of going bishop g5, attacking this knight on c5, right? And she went for this. And maybe you can go knight d3. And after rook c2, knight b4. Pr protecting a2 and also attacking this bishop at the same time. This looks like a draw to me. But of course, there's still, you know. You prefer black, Conesa? Yeah, I mean, after knight d3, rook d2, knight d4, if, the, if this bishop disappears, off the board then, of course, there's no way black is better. And I think too many pawns are going to disappear from the board, right? What's up, Ishi? How are you? So knight b4, very nice idea. And probably this bishop is going to disappear from the board. Rook b2, and now I like to move a3. Some point I can even play rook d3, you go rook b3. Trade this pair of rooks always, well, I can never go rook d3 <laughs> because of rook b1 checkmate. Background problems. So probably going to go rook a1. And this knight is doing just a great job here in b4, protecting a6. And uh, later, probably I need some fresh air to this game with the move a3 in order to have the h to the square, right? Because I think if you take on d5, that's uh, that's death row. So Candela is, is pushing for the win. She goes f3, you know, to neutralize this guy in d5. And now rook takes a3. At some point, white will have to take on d5, not to end up clearly worse. Now, takes on d5. This looks like a dead draw to me. Rook takes, rook takes, rook takes. Give me that baby, give me that baby. And it is a dead draw, one and a half versus half. Sorry, I'm going to show the clocks as well. And they agreed to a draw. We go. So the next game, so this is one and a half versus half for Alina Bibol, for the Russian. I mean, if there's something wrong with the stream or something, please, guys, let me know. I'm reading you all the time, and uh, if you don't understand anything about the position or why they didn't do this or that, I'm here to, I mean, I'm here to talk to you guys. This is more fun. So, 9-3 from Alina. Now they change openings in G3. Going for the Fianchetto, this red tee. Positions, this could also be transposed into the Catalan. Yeah, thanks, uh, Bru, uh, for letting me know that I should uh, show the clocks. I just forgot once again. And uh, C4. Uh, D4 is a natural move, right? After D4, E3, this is uh, Benoni with the reverse colors. And now D4. You know, white lost uh, a tempo, right? This is like uh, the Tarash opening, but with a tempo up for black. So this is, of course, uh, good news for Candela. Uh, she goes h6, prophylaxis against bishop g5, which is actually one of the most natural moves in the Tarash. And knight c3, putting pressure against d5, and the bishop f4 makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, controlling the c7 squared. Knight d5 is always, is always a decent idea in this position, right? Rook c1, now knight d5 could be an option, attacking the bishop on c5. So you got to protect that bishop, and this is what Candela does by playing bishop a6. And I like this move, knight a4, intend to capture the bishop, and also intend to go to the c5 square. Instead, she goes for knight b5. Makes a lot of sense as well. You know, sometimes in the isolated pawn structure positions, you got to block the, the isolated pawn. So... This is why knight b5 is a natural move. Intend to go to d4. Um, Pepe, do you have a new book with Aldivis? Yeah, I have a new book, but it's in Spanish. It's about stories behind a professional chess wall, right? And, uh, you know, you're not going to see even a single chess puzzle, but only stories from the chess wall. 
Maybe it's going to be translated into English, but uh, it's not uh, it's not hundred percent sure. All right, she took on e six, and now of course uh, Black uh, fixed his structure a little bit, but Black has lost the bishop pair. His bishop on f four looks very very risky, right? So g five, bishop e five, and after g four you got the intermediate move, bishop f six, saving saving that bishop. So. It's not a problem yet for Elena, this bishop on f4. I understand she wants to play e3 to neutralize this guy, which is very strong, putting a lot of pressure against f2. But of course, you got to be uh, sure about this. You know, what happens after rook f3? I think you can take with the bishop, and then the knight on h5 is under attack. So this is why you can play bishop e5. Knight takes, knight takes. And uh, I prefer white's position. Uh, because of this bishop, I think now this bishop can fight against this uh, pawn on e6 in the future, right? You got some weaknesses along the light squares, for example, ideas with queen d3, queen g6. And uh, queen b3 attacking this bishop, queen d6, and now I don't know how to proceed. Well, this knight is attacked, so you got two options. Either you go back or you go forward, right? Are you a brave woman? You want to go to g6 or you want to go back to d3? I don't know. Maybe to g6 and then the knight can come back to f4. I think the key in this position is just to put tremendous pressure against the key pawn, which is e6, right? So she goes a3. I mean, she doesn't mind about the knight on e5 because there is the bishop on b6 hanging. So this is why you can play a3, you know. It's a decent move, right? Uh, giving some fresh air to the king, right? It's always useful uh, not to have any background problems in the future. And uh, so one minute, 30 seconds for Candela. Let's see how she plays now. In my opinion, well, you shouldn't take an e5, I believe, because after queen b6, I just don't like Black's position. How am I going to protect the b7 pawn, right? I cannot go back to b8 with the queen because the e6 pawn is just hanging. So 94, well, active move. Interesting, you know, so many black pieces coordinating against the f2 pawn, right? So white should be very, very careful. I believe you can take on c8 and then take on e4, right? And... Uh, that's the most decent sequence, the most natural sequence I think black has, sorry, white has. And now only choices take on e5, because if you take on e4, then knight c4 just wins material, right? So Candela is forced to take on e5. And now maybe you want to keep these bishops on the board, right? In order to bring the queen to d3, and suddenly this king is in big trouble. Incredible. The bishop is under attack. Queen d3 is coming. I believe black has some ideas with queen e4, even though uh, black is losing a pawn, but black, black will always have, uh, well, many drawing chances given the opposite colored bishops. All right, queen d3. Now queen h7 is coming, bringing this king out to dance on salsa, to dance on reggaeton, some Latin music. King f7, bishop g6, nothing happens. This king goes. This is Leonidas, you know, Spartan king, king f6. All heavy pieces in the board, but he doesn't care. You know, he's the king of the dance floor. He wants to go to f6, and nothing really happens. Well, I'm not so sure. <laughs> bishop g6 and bishop h5 looks like a very, very dangerous try here for black, right? So 40 seconds for Candela. Now bishop h5 makes a lot of sense. King, queen g6, followed by queen g7 is... A big threat right now, and I don't know how to play here with the black pieces. 30 seconds for Candela, and uh, there's no way to cover the g6 way. You want to go to e5 with the king? I don't think so. Well, queen f8, very strong move from Candela, you know, covering g7. Now the king can escape to e7 and then t8. Wow. She... Is defending the position pretty well. E4. Now Alina wants to open the position up. E4. I don't know what's going on here. This is very, very tough for black to play. And uh, queen takes E4, centralizing the queen and Candela. 
more or less surviving with this king on e7. Now bishop g4 looks like the way to play. There's a new target on the board. This is the e6 pawn, right? Now you cannot go rookie one since f2 is under attack, right? You wanna you don't wanna go rookie one. Bishop f2 is just winning the game on the spot. So how to proceed? Just a humble move with b3, you know. Rook c6, Candela overprotects the e6 pawn. That means the queen is free to go. The queen doesn't need to protect the e6 pawn anymore. So now you can offer a queen trade with queen f5. Queen f5, of course, trading queens. It's always a good idea here for black, you know. And also the h3 pawn is under attack. 38 seconds for Alina. The only way probably... Well, to avoid queen trades was to go queen g2, very passive. So this is why she, you know, she's fine with the queen trade. And Candela managed to survive in this position. Very tough what she did, yeah? Very hard. She's a big fighter. F4 now. Now, Alina is going to try for sure because she's, she's got 30 more seconds in the clock. And you should always try, you know? Time is uh, it's a decisive factor as well on chess. Right, there's so many people like, you know, I, I was winning the game, but, uh, you know, I would just lost some time. This is just so bad, so ridiculous. Yeah, but time is a, it's a factor as well in chess. And you should deal with that and stop crying like a baby. E6. Now bishop c4. Now bishop b5, rook e6, rook c2. This is very risky, very risky uh, from Candela because now, you know, this pawn is alive. And if a rook manages to get to the seventh rank, this will be the end for Candela. Rook e5, and there we go with the rook on the seventh rank. King g4. Now rook d5, rook d7 is an option. Rook b5, rook b7 is coming as well. Seven seconds for Candela. Now this king is also in a net mate as well. Now Alina has to be extremely careful as well in this, in this position. So g6, h5 ideas could uh, put the skin in a difficult situation, right? So h4, so that's why she gives some fresh air to the king. Now it's hidden on h3, h5 from Candela, seven seconds against 22 seconds. There's not easy to push this one. Rook b6, now e7 could be an option. That's why she goes bishop e7, rook a6. Now rook f5, no bishop b4, rook a7, wow. Now bishop e7 is not possible because of rook a5. Now e7 and Candela will have to resign after fighting for so long. But now there's no way to save this. Hi, Beto, from Guatemala, such a nice country. They used to organize a couple of years ago a very nice open tournament. Sadly, with the pandemic, it's been stopped, but hopefully they'll get back to organize this nice tournament. I played there twice, and it's a nice country for holidays as well. You can visit, there's a famous lake, um, Atitlan. You can Google that. It's just an amazing place. And uh, also La Antigua City. It's a colonial city. It's very nice as well. All right, so, okay, they're taking a small break, five minutes break, or three minutes break, you know, to go to the toilet and stuff like that. So, two and a half versus uh, half, you know, it's very tough for Candela right now. Uh, I mean, Alina just needs a win in order to qualify for the finals. Remember that the final will be played just straight away after the semi-finals. There will be just five minute break or something. So you shouldn't leave this, uh, this stream. And uh, thanks for speaking nicely about my country. We expect to have the, international, the next international tournament in 2023. That will be great. I hope to be there. And uh, this game hurts, right? For Candela. I mean, after fighting so hard. But this is chess, you know. Blitz chess. Do you guys play a lot of online chess? You know, I get so angry so, so many times, you know. Uh, 
I say, okay, I have this rating, let's say uh, 2,800 in chess 24. I want to make it to 20, 2,850. I'm going to play 10 games. This is my plan. You know, I'm going to just play 10 games from 10 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. And then I'm going to read my book. I'm actually uh, reading books now about the Romans, right? Trajano, uh, the Emperor Trajano, you know, it's uh, it's like a book like this, but it's, it's, a, it's a really great book. Um, but then, you know, I start playing chess, I start losing games, and then I get extremely angry. And then I, I play until 3 a.m. I lost like 200 points, and then I want to kill everybody in my house. I want to destroy every wall. And, you know, online chess is so frustrating sometimes. <laughs> uh, Trajano, yeah, yeah, Trajano. Emperor, right? It's, it's like you're saying. Let me just check. I believe. Uh, one second. Yeah, Emperor, yeah. The Trajano Emperor. She was the first emperor from, from Spain, actually. Yeah, in the Roman Empire. I think she he was from, it was called in, in Latin Italica, yeah? That means uh, Sevilla these days, Sev Seville, yeah? But uh, in, in Latin, I think they called it Italica. And she was, uh, he was the first emperor in the Roman Empire from Spain, right? Am I correct? Probably, yeah. Not so sure. Trajanus, yeah. That's right. Yeah. To play chess tired is the worst thing. Conesa is saying, I completely agree, yeah. Because you start losing games and then you don't want to quit it. And then you play till tomorrow. And uh, it is like that, right? Okay, guys. So Candela needs a miracle. The price is really high. I mean, to, to get invited to this nice tournament in Tunisia after playing some online tournament is really great. I mean, Mr. Chokri, Chokri is the organizer of this tournament. She's doing so much for chess in Africa, you know, chess in Tunisia, but in general, chess in Africa. You know, she is trying to organize these tournaments and she's doing so much is doing a lot for women chess as well, you know? There are not so many tournaments for women with big prizes, you know? And then he's inviting a lot of women players as well, and this is important nowadays. So, all right, so we go once again for the French. This is the we now wear, we now wear variation, one of the most difficult variations to, uh, to understand in chess 986. All right, bishop d3. And now probably c takes d4, usually white's idea is just to play knight b5, right? Because uh, after the traits of these dark squared bishops, you know, the d6 square become, becomes very tasty for white, right? So usually you protect the e5 pawn with f4, you need to protect that central pawn, that's for sure. Knight f3, I didn't like this move. I would have preferred to go f4 and then knight f3. So knight takes... On d4, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, and I believe f6 is a very natural move here. Trying to, you know, to fight against this uh, pawn structure. And after pawn takes, queen f6, actually, you know, black has interesting possibilities of pushing forward this, this guys, you know, with e5, e4, winning some space in the center. But we beat up. These, these are not the finals. This is just a semi final, the second semi final. The final will be played. Uh, when this match finishes. So f6. And now probably you're gonna take or you can play knight f3 as well. So queen f6, and I think black is in very good shape here. I would take black without blinking. I mean you cannot take on d4 because of bishop takes h7, but you play e5, that's right. And then this bishop can be developed. And also, you know, you have so much space in this position. For example, now bishop b6. This could be a natural move. Knight c7 is a threat, right? Because the rook is under attack and also the d5 pawn. This would be a nice fork. So you got to be careful here with the black pieces. She goes bishop b6 with good criteria, Alina Bibol. And uh, knight c7 just go rook d8. And after knight e6, queen e6. You know, black is perfectly fine here. 
c3, and you can push a6 or even rook d8. Taking this pawn on e7, on a7, could be an option, actually, so I'm not so sure about rook d8. That's why she goes bishop f7, prophylactic move against knight c7. Now you have nothing to capture on the e6 square. Rook e1, and now a6 finally looks decent, right? Knight c7 is just stupid now, so knight a3 was played. And uh, there are so many ways to play here with the black pieces. Rook d8, king h8, you know, improving the situation of the king. She goes for rook d8. And, you know, you need to do something with this stupid knight on a3. It's doing basically nothing, you know? So that's why you bring it to the action once again. And uh, it's, I don't know why, where, where you are actually going with this knight, because if you go to e3, then d4 becomes a possibility. So that's why Candela tries to stop all these central pawns by playing f3, stopping these e4 ideas. I'm not sure, uh, well, it stops e4 for sure, because after f takes, then the queen is hung in on f6. So that's why Alina goes for knight f5. Bishop takes, queen takes, f5, and f4. Very interesting try. From, uh, from Candela, because now you play e4, then suddenly white has tremendous control on the dark squares and a beautiful three versus two in order to be pushed in the future. So this is why I think f4 is a very good move. But okay, Alina goes bishop g6. I didn't see that. Now the idea after uh, knight e3 is probably to go queen to d3. Very, very good sequence now from Alina Bibol. And knight e3, I believe queen d3 is strong, right? Queen takes, bishop takes, you gotta go rook f2, and then you could have some troubles along the e5, right? But this rook on e1 completely unprotected. So queen f2, and now I believe you can take, and then maybe rook e4 followed by rook e8, right? Suddenly there's big pressure. She goes for d4, it's not a bad move either. Only one minute. For Candela, pawn takes, pawn takes, and uh, knight g4. Candela trying to bring this knight to e5, knight square for the knight. Probably intend to go so some f5, f6, some moment. We're more than 100 people in on Twitch. What's up, everybody? Rook c2, knight a5, and now I believe black is trying to push. Well, she traded queens. Um, I like Candela's position. I like Candela's position. Even though black is a pawn, is a pass pawn, has a pass pawn, then this knight on e5 is just such a monster, right? My idea could be to go rook d2, king f2, king f3, and then try to push this three versus two in the future. Bishop e4 from Alina. So let's just bring the king, right? That's right. Candela goes for that. King f2, followed by king e3. That's the idea. Let's go. Maybe g3 first in order to protect Facundo. You should always protect Facundo. You know? King f2, and then followed by king e3. Never easy to move this bishop back because it allows, you know, the capture of the pawn on d3. So that's why black doubles the rooks on d5. And now king e3, you know, increasing the pressure. You're actually threatening probably to take this pawn on d3. I think Candela is just getting the pawn. I think Candela is just getting this pawn for free if I am not wrong. But I think knight takes d3 is actually possible, right? Am I blind or not? Knight takes d3 is possible, right? I don't see any reason why not to take this guy. And then you can just uh, play knight e5 back. Bishop f5 and then knight c5. This just uh, because rook e4 is, uh, is black's idea. I prefer actually knight c5 in order to cover that square. I think well, that was completely win. Now I'm not so sure. Rook takes e2, rook takes e2, and maybe g5, trying to create some chaos once again. And uh, right, rook takes and g5. If pawn takes, then the knight is hanging on e5. And after rook d8 check, king g7, there are no more checks because the bishop covers the d7 square. I like this route now. Boom, boom, boom. King g3, king h4, and king g5. That looks amazing. 
Bishop e4 check, king f2. And now Candela got a nice advantage. G4 takes takes. Rook h1, now king e3. Let's go, Candela. Bishop b1. Attacking this guy here. Rook e1 check. Now you cannot go to d4 because of rook e4 check. Nice resource. And now rook e4. No. She goes back to h1. Alina. Rook d8 check. Only move king h7. And probably f5. Facundo. No. She goes knight g5. Intending to go knight g5 check. Sorry, knight f7. And king g6, knight g5, and then you're actually threatening checkmate with rook d6. You gotta play king f6 probably, in order to you know to try to run away with this king. King f6, and maybe rook d7 was actually threatening checkmate on f7. All right, rook e8, cutting this king, and rook e7. Candela is probably trying to grab this pawn here, b7, but don't forget that there is a hanging pawn as well on a2, you know? Candela doesn't see the way to finish the game. It's not easy. She goes king g2, and now probably rook c1 and rook d1 are the moves here. That's that's right. And takes, takes. Yeah, not so simple, right? If these two pawns disappear, maybe it is a draw, yeah? Rook b1. Rook b1, now. Of course, the idea is just to collect this guy. Ooh, and now rook b3. I don't know what's going on here. Rook b3. This is just a draw, yeah? Alina managed to survive. Rook c7. Takes, takes. And now, you know, it's still very uh, shaky for both for both sides. Because, you know, this is a very dangerous pawn in the future. And also, the black skin is not in a very good situation. But after this fine move, rook b5, then Facundo is suffering and probably black scared at this point. Check, check. And you know, I think Candela has to be very careful now. Check. And now King f5. She goes for King f4. Very interesting. Intent to go Rook b2, sending this king to the back rank. You know, 10 seconds for Candela. Knight c3, Rook b2. King e1, King f5. Well, now Candela is the one fighting for the draw, but it's it's a very easy draw. Once you bring the king here, this is going to end in a dead draw. This king is completely cut. And that's it, right? Well, then we go for three versus one. And uh, Alina just needs a draw in order to qualify for the finals. And now the Russian will have the uh, the white pieces. By the way, the Olympiad next year will will take place in in Russia in 2022. Remember that that was supposed to 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 happen in 2020, but uh, we all know what happened with the pandemic, right? I think we are all a bit tired of the pandemic. We need more chess tournaments, right? Short castle and their repeating lines. If you remember, they played this same variation the first game, where after knight b6, black got this pawn back very soon. Candela needs two, two wins in a draw, in a row, sorry, in order to uh, balance the, the score. Now, knight e5 could be very annoying, you know, because d6 is actually a threat, and if black captures, there are some tricks with knight takes f7 and queen f3. Are you guys following me? Or am, am I just uh, selling smoke? You know, in the Spanish broadcast, they, they tell me I'm always selling smoke. You know, I don't want to do the same in English, but I think this doesn't depend on the language. You know, now knight takes, knight takes, knight f7 is a big baboon. Boom! Knight takes f7. You know, big shot here from Alina Bibol. The point is, after king takes, queen f3 check, then you get this knight back, you have destroyed black's castle, and it's very, very bad for Candela. 
Well, okay, she took with the queen. That's a very weird decision. I mean, because this king was in a very bad shape, but now Candela could have got this pawn back with uh, bishop takes d4. She didn't. And uh, now it's even harder to take it because after rook d1, then there are two bishops hanging, so you cannot take it. So king f7 was played. And, uh, you know, rook d1, even bishop e5 in order to simplify the position a little bit. Problem for Candela is, like, she needs to win this game, you know? <coughs> the draw is not enough for her. So she needs to win this position. It's going to be extremely tough, right? I mean, miracles happen in chess, you know? And we've seen uh, worse things in life, right? But... Uh, e5, and now, for example, bishop g5, or even bishop e3, that's completely fine. Rook c8, and rook c1. You know, you need to do any crazy stuff here with the white pieces, just playing solid, and, you know, it's almost impossible that black wins the game. So d6 check, and now rook c7, that's a very strong move, because after take stakes, then bishop c5, Leaves this king without a square. And uh, very tough for, for black to, to make a move in this position. I think it's, you know, it's just terrible position, right? Takes, takes, and then bishop c5. That's probably the move that Candela didn't see. And this is probably the end of the match, right? Now, bishop c5 check. Maybe bishop b2, right? To leave this g7 square for the king. But after rook d1, rook d8 is also... Another strong idea here. I like rook d1 right now. That's right. And uh, even bishop h6 is coming. This is just too bad. Followed by bishop g5 check. I think Candela is not going to make it. Bishop g4. Now bishop c5. Followed by rook d8. End of the game. Bishop h6. Now king e7. Maybe she's fine with the draw, you know? Bishop g5 and bishop h6, and then she just wins the match. That's right. Yeah. Maybe she's fine with the draw. I mean, she just qualifies for, for the finals. There is no rating in play, so why not to go for the repetition? To make a draw is the same as winning the game, right? So why not? Candela will have to resign... I mean, bishop g7 is completely suicidal. So I think there's, you know, she's got to take the draw. Um, bishop f6, but this is just suicidal, as we were saying, right? Rook d8, king e7, and maybe even bishop d5. They're attacking two weaknesses, e4 and d5. But she's a very good fighter, you know, Candela. She doesn't give up. She keeps trying all the time. Gonna take this pawn because of rook f1 and uh, the bishop is lost. So, what about this move? Bishop c2. It's a nice joke, right? After takes rook d8, king e7, you can take and then c8. So, bishop c2 is a nice joke at, at least, right? Rook d6, king e7, rook b6, and bishop c8. Come on, Candela, fight! Bishop c8. Bishop c8 and then king d7, trying to collect the c7 pawn. Candela is alive. Come on, Candela. We want to see more action in this semifinals. Now, king d7, followed by king c7. And Candela is getting a pawn back. She goes for bishop a4. Now, rook f8 looks natural in order to attack Facundo. Now, white protects it. Let's just play rook f5 in order to go rook to c5. But then she went for... Rook f6, that looks very, very dark for, for, for black. I mean, you can just take and then bring the king, right? Whenever this king goes to capture the c7 pawn, probably I have taken all those pawns on the king side, right? So that was a bad decision for Candela. And uh, the final match is just after this semifinal, Conesa. So only five minutes after this semi-final, then Alina uh, Alina will, will will face Bodnaruk in the finals. And uh, F4, yeah, this is just uh, a dead draw, right? And a draw is fine for Alina. B5, 
That was very strange. Now bishop d1 and bishop g4 is a threat, so this is why now black is completely losing. One minute for Candela. And uh, bishop d7, bishop f3, bishop c8. Now you can play even b4, and this is a nice suitsman, right? Or even bishop g2 in order to continue with bishop h3. And now Candela has to resign. She fought well, but it was not enough to beat the strong international master Alina Bibol. Bishop a3, now it's time to resign. And now you see that the bishop has the same color of the promotion square. So that means that the end game is completely won, right? You're gonna take, if this bishop were on a dark square, then that would, that would be a draw. a6, now you go, king b6, Candela doesn't give up. And she finally resigns. All right, guys. So I see we are more than 200 people here. That's always nice to see. And uh, in counting all platforms. So the two players who go to the final are international master Alina Bibol, our international master Anastasia Botnag. This final will take place in about five, ten minutes. So let's make a short break so you guys can go to the toilet. You know, uh, there are so many people watching Chess 24 from the toilet, right? You just have to confess it, right? I mean, I mean, every of us, you know, we've done it, you know, we've got to confess it. So hi to all those guys in the toilet watching Chess 24. And uh, let's just put this nice video about Jerba, you know, Actually, the winner of this tournament will qualify for the Jerba Masters in the beautiful island of Jerba in Tunisia. So, Bane, please, let's go for the video. Eh? Yes, video.
Lana, Jerusalem, Ikayana, me. Ilo no lo sé. Uh, Ambena, uh,
Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, what's up? We are back here for the finals between two strong international masters from Russia, Anastasia Bodnaruk and Alina Bibol. So the format is the same, best of six games. That means that the first one reaching three and a half points will win the match. And in case of a tie, we'll go for two more games. In case of 4-4, four, four, we'll go for the Armageddon. So, how are you guys out there in the chat? Send me some signs that you're alive, that you don't fail, that you don't fail, fall asleep in your couch watching this, uh, this broadcast. So, we can continue. And uh, this is going to be super exciting, super balanced. The level is quite similar. And we'll have a lot of fun for sure. And Anastasia driving the white pieces in the first game. So let's see what happens. I don't know what happens with my glasses. You know, I try to clean them all the time, but it doesn't really work, you know? It doesn't really work. All right. Remember that the winner goes to Tunisia, to Jerba, beautiful island. Good organization, great hotels, great food. And there we go. Alina replies with a friendly French against E4. Now the advanced variation with E5. Now usually reinforce the uh, pawn chain and bishop D7. A3, F6, and bishop d3. So after pawn takes e5, usually, well, you can capture even with the knight. This way, you leave the h5 square available for the queen, right? So pawn takes e5, now knight takes e5, or even pawn takes, with the idea of going later knight d5, something like that, right? Or even some queen c2, putting pressure against h7. So let's see, on takes, and I think both moves are completely playable here, right? So knight takes e5, knight takes e5, on takes e5, now you gotta stop queen h5. She didn't, which is quite strange, because now after queen h5, you can never go g6. Because of bishop takes e6, it's g6, sorry, and queen takes h8. So that means that you have to run with the king to d8, and this is, of course, favorable for white, since this king cannot castle, and that means that this king will remain in the center of the board for so much time, right? So Anastasia goes for a short castle in this position, and uh, I believe now uh, black has to, well, at least develop some thesis. My idea would be to go c4, you know, to continue with bishop c5 and knight e7, and later you can hide the skin on the queen side, right? So knight e7, and then the, for example, I like to move c4, right? Trying to open up the position in the center of the board. And this is what Anastasia did. This is why I like to move c4 with the black pieces. Because now, you know, you want to open some files, right? When your opponent's skin is, is, is stuck in the center. So this is why you play c4 in order to go knight c3, Queen c6, and now knight c3 looks very, very strong here in this position, right? Knight c3, knight c3, probably black's idea is to bring this king to c7, but then this knight can jump to b5, so probably it's not a good idea to bring this king to c7, right? So hello to everybody who came from the broadcast of the European Championship. Bishop g5 from Anastasia Bodnaru, king c7, and now something bad is going to happen to Alina in this position. Right, so c takes e5, e takes e5, and for example, moves like bishop f4. She took on e7, and probably her idea is just to go queen f7 with a double attack against the bishop on e7 and the pawn on d5. So queen f7 was played, and now it's tough for black to protect everything, right? I think it's just uh, completely losing. If you remove the bishop to f8, you can even play bishop f5 in this position. 
you know, there is a nasty thing with a queen against the bishop in d7. And uh, not easy for black to play, because knight d5 comes with a surprise as well. Even bishop f5 here looks completely winning. The idea is to push with e6. So bishop e5, f5, sorry, probably you got to resign here already. Knight d5 doesn't look bad either, right? And uh, what's up, Kevin? How are you? And two minutes, bishop f5. I think you have to resign, yeah? So king c8, you play e6 anyway. And uh, after g6, you take on d5. And after king c8, bishop takes d7, queen takes d7. And uh, I mean, this is just terrible for black, right? So rook e8, and now knight takes d5 looks completely winning because if you go king c8, then queen takes e8. It's a big baboon. Now queen takes e8, give me that baby. And then, wow, so beautiful. Queen takes e8, bishop takes f5, 97 check. End of it of the game. Anastasia Bognaru is such a strong player, you know. She's playing so well. What's up, Camilo, out there? And uh, you're going to take an f5, and that means this is a whole rook up for black, for white, sorry, 97. And you're going to resign. Boom! Anastasia, so strong. 97 check, and she resigned. This is 1-0 for Anastasia Podnaruk, trying to qualify for Jebra Masters in February. Now Alina will try to strike back with the white pieces. She's such a, an aggressive player, Anastasia, right? So now she goes once again for the neither, but uh, Alina well, tries the Moscow variation. This is a, you know, a more positional approach against the, uh, the neither. For example, Magnus Carlsen has employed it in many, many occasions. Rookie one. And now d4. This is uh, white to the uh, d5, e5, knight e4, and a3. This is Alina's idea. Well, usually you play knight bd2. That's right. Now you're forced basically to take d2. You don't have so many options in this position since there's so much pressure against the knight on e4. And then usually white tries to play along the C file, but in many cases as well along the king side with moves like H4, H5. Even you can transfer the rook along the third rank. Of course, uh, I mean, black doesn't need to go F6, but uh, she did it. And now I believe that bishop F4 could be an idea. You know, it's very important to find, to fight, sorry, for the E5 square. There's some tactics here. Knight takes E4, what's going on? If knight takes, bishop takes g5, attacking the rook. If bishop takes f6, knight takes f3, intermediate move. Looks fine for looks fine, looks fine for black. So I don't know, guys. But looks like knight takes e4 is a possibility. And she went for it, Anastasia. She finds every trick. There we go. Now Alina. Probably she's got to take on d4, bishop takes g5, knight takes e6, bishop takes c1, knight takes f8, rook takes f8, and queen c1 looks around equal, right? Actually, the engine, the bar says that it, it is 0 0.0000000. Queen c1 and Anastasia managed to equalize with the Black pieces. That's right, Mangbach. Man this looks like the Tarash defense, right? This line with knight d2 and uh, where we play with c3, bishop d3, knight d2. It's very similar to that line. I completely agree. And, uh, you know, well, rook c8 uh, uh, looks, uh, <laughs> looks dangerous, right? There's some background problems. I believe you, you can play queen b3 and then rook d1 check against rook c1. But... Uh, he goes for queen e7, intending to go for a mating one. Now, maybe g3 is enough. Or you can even go back with the rook, but I'm not so sure because you can keep pushing with d3, right? And white can never take on d3 since at the end of the day, there's mate on e1. So, well, you, you got to give some fresh air to this king. And you cannot go h3 because after queen e1, the pawn on f2 falls. So... That's why she went for queen c1. That's a nice idea. Probably you want to bring this queen to d2 or d1. And this way, you protect the e1 square, which is the key square. And at the same time, you put pressure against the pawn on d4. That means the rook is a slave 
of that pawn on d4. So queen d2, and now you're ready to give that fresh air to the king. You can breathe right now without any pollution. B6 from black and B4 from Anastasia, sorry, from Alina. So how do we proceed here with, I believe this is just uh, around equal, right? You, you can, it's not easy to make progress with the black pieces and with the white pieces, you don't wanna over push, right? Your pawns on the key inside, because that means when, you know, when there are heavy pieces on the board, you don't wanna push so hard your pawns in front of, in front of your kin. But that means that king will be in a very, very risky situation. So a4 from Elena, queen d2, and now queen e5, going back. You know, black is just waiting. You know, black is probably happy with the draw. And uh, black cannot make any progress, it is clear. I think the one going for the win here is, is white. But uh, at the same time, it's extremely risky since uh, black has a pass. Uh, a pass pawn on the d5, right? So rook at three. And, uh, well, it is too risky to leave the third rank. I mean, to go for something like rook f7, because then these pawns start running, right? And you don't want that with a white piece. You want to block that pawn and don't allow it to, you know, to go forward, right? So probably you have to admit you know, sometimes this is very hard in chess, you know, admitting that uh, you have nothing uh, and just a draw. So queen e5, I really like queen d5 in that position because after rook f3, you could actually push. So rook queen e4. Now Alina deciding if she wants a draw or not. Rook f4, and I like queen d5 actually. I did something with the board, Bunny, sorry. And uh, well, they finished in a draw, so this is one and a half versus half. Anastasia leading these finals here in Chess 24, deciding who's going to travel to Jerva in Tunisia. Nothing, Bunny, All everything's fine. And uh, E4 from Anastasia, E6, they're going once again for the French, the advanced variation. C3, knight f3, bishop d7. Before they played a3, and now f6. Bishop d3, Anastasia is happy to repeat the lines. And now black changes. Instead of taking on e5, she goes for queen c7, guaranteeing uh, a place on the queen side uh, for the king, right? She goes short castle. And, uh, well, you know, if I were black, I would close immediately the position with c4. I don't want any surprises here with b4 because naturally white wants to expand all the pawns on the queen side, right? Trying to start an attack against the black king. Rookie one and c4, I like this move. That's right, bishop c2, and now you can continue development with moves like knight g to e7, for example, even knight h6 looks fine. Even bring the skin to b8. But she finally decides to take on e5, right? And now bishop d6. No, she took on e5. And now you got this funny move here. Bishop f4, using the fact that there's a pin along this diagonal. And uh, because if you take with the rook straight away, bishop d6, and then h2 suffers. So bishop f4, very, very strong move from Anastasia, who is playing a fantastic chess today. You know, she's going to take on e5. And then at the end of the day, she's going to take with the rook. And that means e6 is going to suffer a lot. Look at this bishop on d7. Not even the pigs will eat that bishop, you know. It's such a sad bishop, you know, just uh, defending the e6 pawn, but not enjoying good diagonals. Now, I like simple plan, you know. Sometimes chess has to be simple, you know? You take on d6, you play knight d2, you play knight f3, and then you bring a knight to the weak square on, on e5. And then if you manage to do that, you are much better in that position. Knight d2, knight f3, positional play, right? This reminds me like uh, Karpov style, right? You wanna, you know, put pressure against your opponent, you know, step by step, you know, just, uh, extending some cream, you know, in his shoulder, you know, and just get ready. So this way it's not going to hurt you. 
So knight f3 and knight e5. Naturally, black will love to play knight c6 and e5, but there's no time for that because the knight arrives to f3 and then controls e5. Pretty nice. And now even rook e3, queen e2, bring the other rook. Queen e2 protecting f2. That means that the knight can jump to e5 in the next move, right? Before it was not possible because Facundo was not protected. Knight c6. Now you cannot jump, actually, because after knight takes, you've got to take with the pawn, and this is not what you want. All the time you want to, you know, keep this file open in order to, you know, put pressure to the weak pawn, which is the pawn on a6. I really like this move from Anastasia. You know, that, uh, you know, requires uh, deep uh, positional understanding, positional knowledge. You know, you eliminate the defender of the e5 square, which is the key square, and then black will remain with a bad bishop against a super strong knight, you know, and all game end games are, you know, much better for, for white. Knight e5, look at this knight against this bishop. He chose, she goes for g3 and uh, queen f5. I would never play f4 because that gives black, you know, the g5 break. And we don't, we don't want to give black any sort of contemplate. Actually, I didn't even like g3. But all right, she went for that. H4, and now H4, that should be the move. For sure, that should be the move. Prophylaxis, you know? And now this leaves black without any kind of contemplate. H4 is just a, such a fantastic move at this moment. For sure, you know? This is Karpov style move. H4, Anastasia Botnaruk, such a strong player, you know? Leaving her opponent without any kind of reaction. And now, of course, you go step by step, you know, you go step by step. I don't know how we can proceed, but for example, I would love to, to, to bring so many pieces to the E file. You got to be careful with Bishop C2 ideas and then Bishop E4. That's actually Alina Bibol. So uh, this is why Anastasia goes knight F3. Probably her idea is just to bring this knight to G5. From G5, you, you control the e4 square. Very nice idea from Anastasia. But anyway, I would have stopped bishop c2 by bringing the rook to c1, right? Because now maybe black can, you know, bring this bishop to f5, stuff like that. Queen d7 protecting e6. And now it's never going to be easy for white to make any progress. I like the square on e5 for a rook. And then, you know, why not to bring the other rook to e5? And suddenly, you know, some tactics are going to arise again, uh, along the e6 and d5 points. So queen f3 is being played by uh, Anastasia. And now queen d3, I would never trade queens. I love endgames, but not in this position. With this king on d7, I would never trade queens. And this rook is coming here in order to put more pressure against e6. Queen g6, now, you know, Anastasia, Alina Bibol's idea is probably to bring this bishop to f5. Now you have this option of going b3 somehow at some point. Rook e5, why not to think about sacrificing the rook on d5? I think it's not working yet because uh, this king can come just to c8. But I like the move now, queen d1. We tried on the e file, it didn't work. So let's try on the queen side. Let's just try to break with b3. And uh, why not to open the position up on the queen side where this game is just suffering if the position gets open at this point, right? So king c8 from Alina and now queen e2. I think she is going for this queen c, queen d1 idea. Rook d6, very nice prophylactic move. Now black says, you know what? If you try to break with b3, I'm going to put my rook on b6 and then it's going to be actually impossible for you Anastasia to break through. So King H2, 22 seconds only for Anastasia, the Russian international master. Annalina has like 45 seconds more in the clock. So, you know, controlling pretty well the time. Queen E8. And now, I don't know what is Black's idea here, probably just to bring the queen to A4, but then you cannot forget about the H5 pawn in this position. So you first have to protect it. Queen F2 from Anastasia. 55 seconds for Alina. 50, 50 seconds. Queen B5. 
Now, you have even this move at some point, 94. 94 is brilliant. 94 is such a good move. You don't win in an exchange. Now, it's not possible anymore. It's only possible with the queen on b5, queen e3 after queen b5, just 94. But now, a little bit says, all right, I also want to party. I also want to bring the queen into, you know, in the first rank, a5. Now, b4 is always an option. Knight h7 attacking the rook. The rook has to go back. Let's say to h6, let's say to f7, or no, she goes to f5. Probably would love to, you know, to get more rooks on the board. So that's why rook e3 is played by Anastasia. Rook e3, wow, there's so much tension going on. She goes for b4, wow, she goes so lean. She goes so lean, queen takes a3, rook a2, you know, chasing this queen, queen c1. Now probably she's going to take this pawn on a5. I would have preferred to take it with the rook. But all right, she took with the pawn. You know, that's also interesting since the b file is completely open right now. And now knight g5, knight did uh, its job. Now we got to keep, we're going to bring this knight back to the action. Queen e1, she decides to trade queens. Now we reach this end game where the pawn on a5 could be weak. But now this knight can also come to e5. And at some point, rook c6. No, rook b5, wow, 10 seconds, rook a6. Nastasia going step by step, Karpov style, you know, good knight versus bad bishop. Maybe it's time to bring this king back to the action in the center of the board. King c8, let's bring this king back to the action. That's right now, you got to play knight f3 in order to bring this knight to a better square. You can bring this knight to a better square. Eight seconds only to Anastasia that decides to, you know, trade the eight pawn for the e6 pawn. That's probably a smart, smart try. Rook e7, knight c5, attacking the b7 pawn, which is, you know, extremely weak right now. Only way to protect it is rook a7, but then this bishop is hanging on g6. That's why bishop d3 was played. Now you can't take this pawn on b7 with the knight. That's right. Rook a1 looks interesting in order to create some contemplate. 13 seconds for the Russian. Well, both of them are Russian. Don't listen to me. King d7, rook b7. You cannot take that because rook b6. That's checkmate. <laughs> Such a beautiful game. That was pretty amazing, guys. This is chess, you know. Chess is such an intense sport, you know, where everybody makes mistakes. They're going to take a small break, so I'm going to be chatting with you guys. They're going to the toilet every three games. You know, they just take a small break. And uh, what's the score? Let me just, uh, the score is two and a half versus half, right? If I'm not wrong. <clears throat> so intense, right? So, what are you up to? What are you up to, guys? Come on, tell me something. What are you going to do? What did you do during this weekend? You partied hard? Or did you just stay at home watching Netflix? By the way, guys, you got to recommend me a, a series, you know, in Netflix. I, I watched a lot of them, but uh, I need a new one. I need new, you know, new drug on Netflix or somewhere else. I don't care, you know. I just need your advice, you know, because I, I'm taking a long flight, like seven hours flight to Dubai. I'm actually living from Ibiza, Ibiza, Barcelona, Barcelona, Dubai. That's going to be seven hours, you know. And... Uh, are you happy that your first name is also the greatest meme of all time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, why is Pepe so used in Twitch, you know? Whenever I, I, I enter in some, I start watching some streamer on Twitch, I, I see like 2000s of Pepe's, you know, like uh, in the chat, you know? But Pepe... You know, it's like uh, the nickname of Jose, you know, in Spain. You live in Barcelona, Mancaf? Good city, right? Good city, Barcelona. I agree. 
Such a nice place, very international. Mm. And uh, right, so I'm not gonna show you the video once again. So I'm gonna keep here chatting with you guys till they come back from the small break, and uh, we can keep uh, you know with these finals. And now it's two and a half versus half for Anastasia. This Anastasia, such a strong player, you know. Russia, chess national sport. Also in Armenia, right? Some countries, some countries, chess is so important. Even in Cuba, you know, in Cuba, everybody knows a, a lot about chess, you know. In Spain, it's growing, it's growing. With this pandemic and uh, the Queen's Gambit series on Netflix, it's actually growing a lot. You know? Before, we used to hide that we were chess players, right? I mean, when we were going to some disco or some bar and then we met one girl or you met one guy and then we were hiding that we were chess players, right? We didn't tell her or him until we were in the sixth or seventh date, right? <laughs> But today it's cool, you know, we say, you know, I'm a chess player. And they look at you like saying, oh, man, you rock, you know. But this has changed in the last few years, you know. Finally, we have what we deserve for so many years, you know. Right? So 100 people on Twitch, that's good, man. So how many of you are completely new here today in the chess broadcast? It's the first time for some of you who are watching the chess stream. I played chess tournament in St. Petersburg, one round with Portish. Wow, that's very cool. I've never been to Russia, I have to say. Um, all right, so we go for the fourth game. Once again, the Moscow variation against uh, the Nidorf and uh, C4. This is a more solid approach. And uh, this is some sort of Maroxi variation, but with one minor piece exchange. And this is, uh, this is favoring, of course, black, because in the Maroxi variation, you are suffering from lack of space. So that's why it's interesting to trade some pieces. This is why this variation is considered to be around equal. I think she just blundered knight g4, Alina. So this is why you usually, here you play knight f3 at this point. And this is why you play f3 and bishop e3 first before going short castle, because I think knight g4 here is very strong. That's right, knight g4. Now after knight c6, you have the intermediate move knight e3. So this was a clear mistake by Alina now, you know, she's in trouble, actually, because, uh, you know, for example, after knight c2, you can even take on c3, and then these pawns are very, very easy to attack, right? So, yeah, I would like to, to be in Alina's shoes right now. Queen d2, she's got to take with the f-pawn, you know, that means you have no Facundo pawn anymore, and you have a terrible pawn structure. You have a fantastic square on e5 with the knight. Now, c4 had to be protected. And, you know, this is just a dreaming position that you, uh, this is just a, the position that you dream of uh, with the black pieces, right? Now, for example, I like a6. a6 always an interesting idea. You know, uh, sometimes you, you, you want to play b5, not any, not now, right? Because c takes b5 just winning up one. But now she goes e6. D6 is hard to attack, and with E6, you control the D5 square. Naturally, white was intended to go knight D5 in that position. Knight E2, that means you are now free to go B5, right? Because there are not so many pieces controlling that square. Anastasia is playing extremely well today. C takes B5, A takes B5, and, you know, this bishop can be acti activated by A6, you know, putting pressure against the E3 pawn. And, uh, well, it's so easy to play here with the black piece. It even moves like queen b7, um, you know, putting pressure against e4, right? That looks good as well for white. And, uh, well, I don't see any plan for white here. Knight 
F4 and now after queen b7, how are you going to protect this guy here on e4? I don't see a way. I don't see a way to protect this guy on e4 because d3 is covered, c2 is covered, and uh, well, there's just no way to protect that pawn. So queen b7, and uh, it's true that whenever you take on e4, I'm just taking this pawn on b5. So it's not that trivial here for black to capture this pawn in the center. Rook d1, and for example, you can play knight d7. With knight d7, where are you threatening? Well, you are threatening e5, fork against these two knights, and then you want to bring this knight to c5, where actually if that knight lands on e4, this will be a disaster for white in that position, right? So very tough position for Alina. Rook c5 was played. There's some tactics here with knight e6. I think it's not working. I think it's not working at all, but I mean, <laughs> maybe it's the best that you have here with the white pieces. Otherwise, now queen e4 is coming since the, the pawn on b5 sign. So knight d3 d was played. Knight takes d3, queen takes d3. At least white managed to protect the pawn on e4. Bishop e5 from Anastasia, who is occupying this fantastic square all the time. And now white says, you know what? You're going to be careful with the f7 pawn, right? So be careful, don't move this rook away, otherwise f7 is going to fall. So queen d7, and uh, now let's see, how do you play with the white pieces? One minute, 40 seconds for Alina, one minute, 44 seconds for Anastasia. Did I say Anastasia? <laughs> Anastasia. Um, now a three, you're gonna, Move this bishop away. Probably bishop g3 is a good idea, right? Bishop g3, bishop g7 back. And now maybe it's time to change target with the white pieces. Rook d2 attacking d6, rook d8. And now rook d1 could be played here in this position. But, uh, you know, black can even play d5, even queen c7, right? Queen c7. There's no way to capture on d6. After queen c7, you intend to go rook c3, increasing pressure against the pawn on e3, which is the, one of the worst pawns in white pawn structure. And, uh, well, you're just suffering so much. Queen f1, prophylaxis against rook c3, and now you finally can push b4. This stops these two versus one, and, uh, you know, this gives this c3 square for the bishop as well. You can also attack the, a, the e3 bishop by a6, which is also a nice square for the bishop. And uh, this is the plan, right? Bishop a8, rook c3, queen c5. Looks very easy to play once again with the black pieces. Bishop a8, now e3 has to be protected. Probably rook e2 or rook e1 are the moves here to consider. Rook e1 and now rook c3. More and more pressure, you know, like putting the screwdriver, you know, in your opponent's uh, shoulder, you know, and, and you know, it's even it's very hard now for for white to to protect this pawn. Now, queen c5 makes a lot of sense, and finally, black is gonna capture this sad pawn on e3. It took with the rook, and this is just a free pawn up for Anastasia Botnaruk. What a lecture, what a lesson of chess she's giving us today for free, you know, to all of us. We are enjoying so much her play, you know, she's such a strong player. Now she wants to go knight g4. The best prophylactic move here, in my opinion, is h5. I mean, she's just playing so well, you know. Knight f3, and now rook c8, you know, another piece to the action. That could be an idea, yeah. She's just, uh, you know, poof, it's just uh, impossible, yeah, to beat her in one game. Bishop goes back to h6, rook d1, and now d6 is under attack. Bishop f4, you know, protecting d6 also, putting an eye on the h2 square. And bishop f4, uh, no, she doesn't, they don't hear me. Don't worry, guys. I mean, we are not in the same Zoom call. <laughs> I'm in one Zoom call with the producer, they are in another Zoom call. Don't worry, guys. They, they cannot listen to me, yeah? Just say Nastia, Nastia. All right. Thanks, guys, for teaching me some Russian, yeah? 
The only thing I can say in Russian is Nazdrovia. I was living in Poland, actually. I was st- studying in Poland. My, my master's in Gdansk, in Danzig. And uh, I can say Nazdrovia and Tovarish, right? Tovarish is like colleague, yeah? That's the only thing I can say in Russian. And Nepomniachtchi. Queen A6, King G7. Rook F1. Let's see how Nastia finishes her opponent. Queen C6, probably the safest move. I like it. You know, I like it. Minimizing risks. Queen A5 now. Queen takes E4. That's another free pawn. At the same time, protecting B4. Only seven seconds for Alina. No, she doesn't take it. Queen A6. 26 seconds. Anastasia needs a win. So probably she is not repeating in this position. Bishop E3 was played. Only eight seconds. Queen D3. Alina wants to stay in the finals. She wants to play one more game. Bishop h6 back, knight d4. Oh, some tricks, yeah? Knight b5, maybe. Rook c6, knight d4 back. Maybe queen c3. What about this move, queen c3? Queen d1. Wow, 14 seconds. Now we're in time scramble. Queen e5, 10 seconds. Probably e4 is hanging. There's no... Easy way to protect it now. Queen takes e4, queen takes d6. What's going on over there? No, she doesn't take it. She doesn't want to risk queen e1, e5. The bishop is coming to f4, probably f6. Queen d3, rook c6, rook d1. Now there's pressure against d6. You cannot trade on c3. Rook c2, and uh, knight e1. Queen c5, queen takes c5. Wow, that was a misclick. And uh, Alina is, got, is going to resign in this position. And Anastasia wins this Jerva Women Online 2021 tournament. And that means that she qualifies for the Jerva Masters that will take place in the beautiful island of Jerva. Beautiful country, Tunisia. This year, I'll be going two or three days in advance to visit the capital, you know? I would love to visit Cartago. Uh, you know, Cartago, uh, you know, I have uh, read a lot, uh, a lot uh, about Hannibal, yeah, and, uh, and Roman Empire and Cartago, so I would love to visit that before going to the tournament. And, uh, I mean... It was just a clear win by Anastasia in the semifinal and in the final. She's played so strong today. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this broadcast. I think we have seen very interesting chess. And it's been great to interact with all of you uh, in the chat. That's always uh, nice to see that there are some people watching you. So <laughs> uh, you don't think you're crazy talking just uh, yourself, right? And uh, what about the prices, Pepe? Yeah, the prices uh, the prices are split already uh, for, for every player. So here, uh, uh, you know, we were here to decide who was going uh, to the Jerva Masters, which is only the winner. So they're telling me something. One second, guys. Uh, so yeah so I think that's it it's time to to say goodbye to to all of you and uh, for those who are from Tunisia hope to see you very soon over there is such a nice country guys I mean, I am from Granada you know so we are very close you know so I feel them like my my neighbors, and I think we're quite similar. And uh, for all of you who are planning to play in a decent tournament in February, I definitely, I strongly recommend you to go to Jerba. You know, great organization, great hotel, a lot of parallel activities during the tournament. Um, You know, great people, just great people. All right, guys. So I think we are going to wrap it up and say goodbye to all of you. 
and uh, I'll be seeing you in the next event here in Chess 24, and uh, which is the World Chess Championship. I'll be doing Spanish commentary, but you will have great commentary in English. So thanks a lot. Big hacks from Spain. And take care, yeah? Bye-bye. Jerusalem